I really don't think that that open banking is something that businesses or you know, everyday Canadians should be concerned with at all. It's not something that they uh, you know are, are like wittingly taking advantage of or something that they need to decide, oh, I want open banking or no, I don't want open banking. Open banking is just a, a framework that allows them to do the things that they're already doing. Welcome to Greater Than The Sum, the series where we demystify what it takes for small business owners in Canada and the accountants that support them to get control of their finances. I'm your host, Mark Cassini, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Pluto. Pluto is an all-in-one payment automation platform that automates your payable and receivable workflows. If you're a small business owner in Canada who's ready to take control of your finances, or an accountant looking to spend less time on manual tasks and more time as an advisor, then you're in the right place. Join me as we uncover the secret to making your business greater than the sum of its parts. Hey, Tal, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Super excited to have you here. We'll get right into it with some easy questions up front. So if you could just give it as an overview of who you are, what you do, and where you work. Sure. So my name is Tal Schwartz, uh, and I write the Canadian FinTech newsletter. It's a, a weekly publication. It's the largest one in Canada that covers uh, the Canadian financial services and technology industry. And basically what I do there is I cover big funding announcements, interesting products that are being launched, and a little bit of uh, policy development as well. Before that, I, I started this group called the Canadian Lenders Association, the CLA, which is the largest financial services trade group in the country. And I'm also a GP at uh, the venture capital firm uh, Exit North Ventures, and we do early stage Canadian FinTech investment. You know, that's your mission, but what would you say motivates you? Why do you do what you do? So I think Canada has a bit of a, like a complicated rap. You know, internationally, we're known as having a very you know, formidable, large, stable you know, financial system, particularly a strong banking system. But what I think often gets overlooked is we also have a you know, very uh, exciting technology ecosystem as well that services uh, the financial services industry. And, and it's always a, a little bit complicated because th that is sort of despite Canada having some really big success stories uh, within fintech internationally. You know, we have companies that were started here like Shopify, Nuve, Lightspeed. You know, these are multi-billion dollar uh, publicly traded uh, companies. Yet at home, we still sort of have a little bit of a, a chip on our shoulder. So, so yeah, a big part of my uh, motivation is really to kind of cover these types of businesses and show uh, how much exciting stuff is, is happening locally. Yeah, absolutely. I think much like your average Canadian, Canadian companies tend to be a bit modest about their success, especially abroad. So I'm glad that we have individuals such as yourself to shine a light on that and kind of work past that modesty at times. So what would you say is the current state of the Canadian fintech industry and how has it evolved over the past few years? So I'd say that we have a, a albeit uh, nascent, but rapidly growing uh, fintech industry here. Like taking a step back, you know, Canada's population around 40 million, about 95 ish percent of those people uh, are serviced by just six financial institutions. So six big banks. And that's really been the case for as long as anyone uh, can remember. But we are kind of starting to see cracks, you know, within that oligopoly um, a little bit. So there are, you know, new players that are starting to emerge, you know, to service Canadian consumers and, and Canadian small businesses and, and slowly biting off larger and larger pieces of the financial ecosystem. So, you know, starting to see huge amounts of innovation within areas like uh, lending and banking and capital markets, uh, both on the consumer side and, and on the commercial small business side. So you've been writing for Canadian FinTech since 2022 and have one of the most comprehensive views of the Canadian financial landscape. From your experiences, what are the most common reasons businesses in Canada struggle with maintaining control over their finances? And are there particular patterns or pitfalls you've observed that lead to these issues? So I think what's important to, to remember is it, the vast majority of Canadian businesses are small businesses. So, uh, you know, those are you know, mom and pop entrepreneurs that are you know, truly focused on building and selling, you know, uh, whatever it is they do. In, in nearly all cases, uh, you know, these aren't finance experts. These aren't people that want to or are able to spend the majority of their time doing you know, uh, back office activities, managing bookkeeping, uh, their banking relationships, things like that. 
when these businesses are starting up, you know, they're making, uh, you know, decisions that end up having uh, serious effects, you know, as they start to scale and grow. And, and, you know, many of the technology decisions that they're making on day one, you know, aren't necessarily the right technology decisions for day 100 or day 1000. You know, in most cases, these businesses are starting, you know, with paper and some spreadsheets and they're sending out you know, PDF invoices. And that's totally okay when you're small and, you know, you can manage those things on your own. But as your business grows and becomes more complicated and you require multiple bank accounts and you start transaction, uh, transacting in multiple currencies, uh, maybe you have you know, hundreds of suppliers and vendors, then, you know, things start to fall apart uh, quite quickly. So it is important to, you know, make decisions early that do scale, uh, even when that point of scaling seems incredibly far off in the future. Yeah, it's it's one of those kind of constant challenges I think a lot of SMBs and entrepreneurs face where you have got to ha have an eye on the present and the work that you're doing and the you know products and services you're providing to the market, but also have the other eye on the future uh, from both the front office and the back office. And it's definitely a delicate balance. And, you know, I'm curious in your opinion, how do you see kind of that friction and that balance play itself out and manifest within organizations, especially when it comes to financial control issues? Can you share any real world examples that highlight the detrimental effects on business operations and growth. I mean, AP automation is a lot more than just, you know, sending invoices and receiving payments. You need to have financial controls, you know, at, at multiple you know, stages uh, uh, with, within your business, really to avoid making financial errors, uh, you know, things like uh, you know, not being able to reconcile payments properly, or, you know, in many cases, even sending payments to the wrong suppliers or vendors, those types of controls are really what you know helps a business scale and what allows you know what, what could be a, a small or anemic finance team to you know operate like a large um, enterprise more specifically you know there's um, a statistic that I read that the average Canadian business waits about 27 days for an invoice to be paid which you know is, is obviously an issue in and of itself as a business you need to be able to manage that lapse in time. Uh, where, where an invoice isn't being paid and kind of accounting for that cash flow. And, and without having certain you know, financial controls uh, in place, you know, a 27 day period can, in some cases, sink a, you know, a, a, a company you know, at, a, at, a, at a certain you know, scale and repetition. Are there specific fintech tools or technologies or even strategies across banking, payment operations or treasury management that you recommend based on your view of the evolving Canadian landscape? Yeah, totally. And we um, uh, we actually just put together a uh, a FinOps map, which lays out different uh, Canadian vendors uh, that uh, allow small businesses to uh, do things within AP and, and AR uh, automation. That I put together, uh, you know, in partnership with Pluto. You know, there, there there are tons of different ways to to, to think about this. In my writing, historically, I've sort of thought of like generalist solutions like. Pluto that can kind of be applied to, you know, any size business in any stage because it connects to basically every major ERP or uh, accounting platform. And, uh, you know, there are tons of other tools, uh, do parts of, of, of this type of billing, first pay, NetNow, and Peloton. Uh, there are also the, what I like to think of as like the specialist that will just provide solutions for a specific uh, industry niche. So like within the, uh, you know, the restaurant or like food and beverage uh, uh, services industry, you have companies like uh, like Tap Commerce and Notch doing um, a lot of AP automation tools that are specific to things like modeling and planning and, and reporting. Uh, really cool Canadian uh, companies like Maxa, Quota, Atlas uh, that are, you know, making it very easy for, uh, for businesses to pull reports out of their ERP systems. And then you know, in categories like you know, expense management, we have Canadian companies that are basically mirroring the innovation of you know, similar companies in the US like Brex and, uh, and Ramp, but locally in Canada. So these are companies like Procurify uh, on the West Coast, uh, Float does uh, some really, really cool stuff with expense management and putting billing on employee cards, you know, everything down to payroll providers, and FX providers like Corpay and Finofo, both really cool Canadian fintech companies. And then one area that, that I get most excited about, and, uh, and there's a ton of innovation happening in here specifically, in the area of, of, of digital banking. So companies like Vault, Loop, Truly, Key Technologies, uh, these are all like digital first small business banks. Yeah, I love that. And you've 
you've already kind of touched on some of the the pieces I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You know, what would you say are some of the practical steps Canadian businesses take uh, can take to regain control over their finances? Are there specific fintech tools or technologies or even strategies across banking, payment operations, or treasury management that you recommend based on your view of the evolving Canadian landscape? The most important thing is really to just pick technology that's well suited to either the type of business that you run or the stage of business that you run. You know, they're like what I refer to as sort of like generalist platforms like Pluto that, you know, will 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 allow you to integrate into pretty much every major, you know, ERP and, and accounting system, which means in most cases it's a suitable tool for most businesses to use. You know, on on the other hand, there are companies that I sort of think of as like specialists, so they'll only focus on a specific industry uh, vertical. So, and some you know cool examples of this in Canada would be you know, restaurant services. You have companies like Notch and Tab Commerce that are like only focused on the food and beverage you know supplier industry, and you know they're only connecting into downstream tools that are specific you know to those vendors. You know there there are trade offs to uh, you know to going in in either direction, but like whatever system again you're selecting it just needs to be relevant to the type of business that you're running and it needs to be able to scale right on so uh, i want to just shift to my next question here um you know when businesses successfully implement better financial controls what positive results do they typically see any examples you can share to highlight that so i mean look there there are two big ones obviously you know if you're putting in financial controls you're going to make less silly mistakes you know and and these are really silly but they really they happen all the time you know sending payments to the wrong vendors or paying the wrong amount in tax or, or paying tax from the wrong accounts or paying it late, you know, just generally sending, um, you know, money from in, in incorrect currencies. You know, these are things that happen all the time. If you have the financial control set up, those silly mistakes should not happen. The second thing is, you know, with better financial c- controls, you're able to make more financially prudent business decisions. And that usually means because if you, if you are instituting uh, uh, financial controls, it, it, it typically means that you also have some sort of integrated, you know, financial operating system that gives you, you know, like a reasonably holistic view into your company's finances across like all the accounts that you're managing across uh, your ERP systems. And it makes it much easier to do forecasting uh, and budgeting. So I would say that those are kind of like the two big unlocks that a business would receive from financial controls. Yeah. And those are big ones. So looking ahead, what trends or innovations in fintech do you believe will be most beneficial for Canadian small businesses aiming to improve their financial control? And what advice would you give to business leaders to stay ahead of these trends and leverage them effectively? I mean, it, like I think integration is like really the biggest unlock for for small businesses. You know, as you're building your financial operating system, you know, you're sort of doing this organically. So as you grow, you realize, oh, you know, now I need an invoicing system. You know, okay, I'll take this one. Uh, or, oh, you know, now I'm doing, I'm paying a lot of vendors in the US, uh, or I'm, ex- I'm thinking of expanding into a new market. Okay, I'll open this account. And, and often what ends up happening is you have all these disparate kind of point solutions that don't really integrate very well with each other. And uh, then you start to, you know, th- see things breaking down, mistakes being made, and the kind of efficiencies lost. If, if you are using multiple point solutions, that's totally fine, but having them all integrate together is huge. Or having, you know, a single operating system that kind of can replace, five or six or seven different types of uh, software uh, solutions and just have one platform that you're operating out of that's you know, giving you a lot of sight into you know, decisions around FX or lending or accounting, you know, that's huge. So I guess my advice would be you know, when you are looking for, for vendors, you know, make sure you're looking at fintech companies that play nice with each other and kind of use in, uh, you know, integration as a, a differentiator. <laughs> I want to just shift gears and, and kind of focus on the, you know, the, what comes with you're running a, a small business from the financial side of things. And that's, you know, sometimes winning and sometimes losing. Uh, so let's, let's kind of dig deep into that space uh, with my first question here. And that's many SMBs in Canada struggle with adopting fintech solutions, despite their potential benefits. What are the key barriers that prevent these businesses from fully leveraging fintech? And are there common misconceptions about fintech that you believe contribute to these barriers? For sure. I think that, I mean, that look, the biggest barrier is just lack of awareness. You know, there are, there are many uh, businesses that are still using the tools that they kind of, you know, receive when they open their bank account, which is okay. But, you know, there's there's a whole advy of, of uh, fintech solutions that, that you can choose from. One, like slightly more nefarious one would be often banks do make it kind of intentionally difficult 
to either adopt new fintech solutions uh, or make certain technology decisions that would allow them to adopt, you know, fintech solutions. And, you know, and, and we can kind of go into why that might be the case. You know, the last one is, is also just, there's a little bit of a malaise, you know, generally when you're running a business, you know, and, and this is kind of more prevalent in certain industries than others, but if you're a business owner, you've always done things a certain way, you know, you'll always have a bit of a bias to continuing to, uh, you know, conduct your business in the same way, even if it is less efficient. And those are just like natural, you know, hurdles that can be overcome with, with, with time. But, you know, I think what's kind of important not to lose sight of business, you know, shouldn't just be adopting technology with the sake of adopting technology. You know, there, there needs to be a, like a meaningful you know, business case in place. And, and really the only times you should be adopting technology is because it's you know, saving you a lot of time or it's saving you a lot of money. And, and then kind of everything should be downstream uh, from there. That, that should really be like the guiding force in making any type of uh, fintech decision. Absolutely. And, and one thing I wanted to double down on, and I think you're so right about, is this relationship between SMBs and, you know, the, the big banks and not to throw shade towards our friends at, at the big banks, but they are very good and they have created a system that incentivizes their employees to sell services and products to SMBs that they might not necessarily need or, or even fully understand. And I know there's a lot of be work being done in the regulatory space to kind of combat that and address that behavior. Everyone trusts the big banks or a lot of people just take what the big banks say at face value. And it's easy to understandable why. So if you have someone representing this bank saying, hey, you should really use this product or service. It's hard as a small business owner to think, well, like, why would they sell me something I don't need? They're a bank. Of course, they're here to help me. And that's something that I think people are becoming more more smart to and more wise to. Totally. I mean, like I, like I said earlier, over 95% of all financial assets in Canada are controlled by you know, six financial institutions, which means that... Canadian banks are amazing at uh, cross-selling services. Uh, you know, they have these massive, massive ecosystems and tons and tons of different products that they can offer you. And they're amazing at kind of keeping you within those ecosystems. And so when I say that there is kind of like a disincentive for, you know, banks to kind of lose control over their clients, it's in, it's in areas like this, you know, if, if they're able to go and find cheaper or, 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 or faster or better solutions in, in uh, AP or AR automation, or even in uh, point of sale technology that they're using, they're slowly, you know, ceding control to competitors and they're also losing on potential upsell uh, opportunities. Like an amazing example of this would be Moneris, which is uh, like a point of sale terminal. And the company is jointly owned by uh, a consortium of a few of the biggest banks. And so when you go in, you know, when you're opening a small business account at one of these banks, as a part of the, the package, you know, you'll, you'll get one of these terminals or you'll get like a huge discount to use one of these terminals because the bank knows that they're going to make so much money off of those merchant accounts based on you being locked in uh, to their system. So, and there, I mean, there are countless and countless uh, examples like that. You know, earlier you asked about kind of like what are like the misconceptions around fintech probably the largest misconception is around this, this idea of uh, safety, you know, using a, a solution that isn't bank owned is somehow less safe or less reliable than a tool that's offered by a bank, which is just like simply not the case. You know, FinTech companies are also captured by, you know, a huge amount of uh, consumer you know, protection regulation. Uh, you know, there are tons of financial controls uh, at the policy level uh, in place to make sure that FinTechs are held to an incredibly high standard. Banks have done a very, very good job, both at branding themselves as like safe custodians of, of capital, which they are, and which is sort of the purpose of banks. But by the same token, saying that if you aren't a bank, that you know somehow you are less able to provide the same level of uh, you know safety and control of things like consumer data that a bank would. You know that that's a constant you know tension between regulated financial institutions that are in most cases not technology first organizations, uh, and on the other side. Technology first organizations like fintech companies that are, you know, incredibly adept at creating fantastic, you know, customer experiences. Back in January, you know, you published a set of predictions for 2024. And one of them was AI is coming for accounting. What impact do you see generative AI having on the accounting profession? And what value does this bring to Canadian SMBs? I mean, there's the, <laughs> this is kind of like, you know, one of the, uh, Sort of like with the topic du jour, you know, how, how are different aspects of, of uh, financial services going to 
uh, you know, be disintermediated by, uh, by AI. I think within accounting, there are going to be so many uh, unlocks, you know, primarily around, you know, the more menial tasks associated with, with things like bookkeeping. There, you're already starting to see tons of accounting platforms uh, you know, adopt AI to categorize different transactions, which, you know, in the past would have had to be done manually or through some sort of a bookkeeper, but even like slightly more sophisticated work, you know, work that even like auditors have to do uh, or, or accounting firms have to do when they're putting together compilations. AI generally is, is, is going to be able to streamline the way that both accounting firms uh, operate and interact with their clients, but also the way that you know, internal finance teams are able to quickly pull information or put together reports from uh, from their ERPs or accounting systems to get a you know, very quick snapshot of their financial health or uh, putting budgets together. Things that historically have taken hours, you know, days, weeks to, to, to put together. And, and, and also it'll kind of allow you to monitor these things more frequently, you know, as opposed to putting together uh, like month-end reports or quarterly reports uh, or end of year financials, you know, you're able to quickly have very similar types of uh, reports and information available 24 seven. Yeah. And, and one thing that I think ties nicely into a comment you made earlier about AI is, you know, we talked about this idea of, of trust, right. And, and, you know, it's sometimes it can be challenging to develop that level of trust with a FinTech solution because it's new, it's, you know, technology that the small business owner might not be familiar with. And I think when you layer on AI to that, the question of trust becomes even more challenging because it's a, a you know one of the newest well depending on who you ask maybe not one of the newest technologies but it definitely has a lot of uh, airtime right now and everyone's talking about ai so on that note i'm curious how do you think smbs should consider or or keep in mind how they leverage ai to make their own lives easier especially when it comes to fintech solutions what what kind of critical lens should they put on when it comes to evaluating whether or not hey you know my business is ready to make start taking advantage of some of these ai tools that these financial solutions are offering? Yeah, there, I mean, there's always skepticism around adopting new technology. I mean, I, I think, you know, most businesses would be surprised to know that they, you know, whether wittingly or, or not, are already using AI uh, 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 tools, you know, in their day-to-day -day, uh, interactions with clients. I mean, the amount of times that I'm on customer support and I don't know if I'm speaking to a human or an AI bot is totally astounding. And that really speaks to the level of sophistication that these tools have and those types of you know interactions, you know whether you're dealing with them in a like as as a customer of, of another company or as the actual company that's offering uh, these tools is is absolutely huge and I think it's it's only a matter of time before companies feel you know more comfortable kind of ceding control uh, that they typically had to a human being to some sort of either AI uh, augmented you know human being or just entirely to an AI. Absolutely. Well, speaking of mom, uh, just a matter of time, it also feels like, you know, there's, it's just a matter of time uh, when it comes to this idea of open banking in Canada. Uh, and, you know, there is a growing acceptance of open banking principles from the Canadian public, right? One recent study found that 45% of respondents are in fact supportive of, of authorizing their financial institutions to transfer their data to third parties. What opportunities does open banking present to Canadian SMBs? And what concerns should be taken into account? Um, and, and lastly, you know, how can SMBs prepare to capitalize on those opportunities? I mean, so, like so much has been written about open banking, you know, like as, as long as I've kind of been you know, writing about the industry and, and, and well before. Um, I think it's, it's also kind of important to note that in just this last week, uh, Bill uh, C-59 uh, was uh, given royal sense. So that and that's kind of like the first time that the open banking framework in Canada is officially in law like ever. So. You know, like the train has left the station. You know, this is this is happening. Although we don't know when it's going to be implemented, it will be implemented, and the unlocks are are absolutely massive, both for you know consumers, but also for um for for small businesses. Uh, you know, being able to you know, like in a, in an accounting example, you know, being able to close your books within a, a few minutes or a couple hours versus in a pre-open banking era, something that would take you know, potentially days and days to do because you're you have like two PDFs open and you're making sure line by line that things, uh, you know, reconcile. That is a huge, huge time saver. Uh, being able to like quickly, uh, you know, verify your identity using your bank account is a, is a huge, huge time saver and reduces dramatically the amount of fraud that, that businesses uh, experience, both 
basically any type of financial services interaction, payments, lending, banking. So what concern should you know businesses have? You know, to be honest, I, and you know, this is just my opinion, but I really don't think that that open banking is something that businesses or you know, everyday Canadians should be concerned with at all. It's not something that they uh, you know are, are like wittingly taking advantage of or something that they need to decide, oh, I want open banking or no, I don't want open banking. Open banking is just a, a framework that allows them to do the things that they're already doing, signing into their bank account. These are things that the businesses already are doing and have to do. Open banking is just a mechanism to allow them to do that, those things quicker and, and bring like huge amounts of efficiency into you know what otherwise are inc- like huge time sucks for um, for Canadian businesses. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I, I love your example of just being able to log into a financial service with your existing bank credentials. I mean, that's something that you can already do when you log into your CRA account. You, you can connect through your bank account. They've built that relationship. So imagine that, but on a broader scale, and kind of more of those connections between things like the CRA, your bank account. And other financial tools that can help your business grow. I think to your point, like the possibilities are kind of endless, and it's uh, I agree, not something that you know should keep small business owners up at night worrying about. Oh no, open banking is coming for for me and for my business, and I'm going to have to change the way that I work. If anything, like you said, it's, it should make small business owners' lives a lot easier. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, for the for the amount of air time that open banking receives for it being such a it's an incredibly niche piece of both of, of legislation, but also it's like a very nuanced thing for, you know, the average Canadian or average business owner to kind of, you know, wrap their head around, but it receives so much airtime partially because it's, it's, you know, it's one of the largest competitive threats to traditional banking, you know, because it, open banking is enabling fintech companies to go and offer competitive financial services that are much cheaper than what the banks offer. You know, but but two, it also just has terrible branding. You know, like the name open banking sounds bad. You know, no, you don't want to have those two words together. You want banking to be private and safe and closed. And, you know, you don't want someone peering over your shoulder when you're like entering your pin in an ATM. So, so unfortunately, open banking has developed this this bad rap, partially because of terrible, terrible branding, but also because it, it is one of the largest threats to the largest uh, you know industry within the uh, Canadian economy. So we, we've talked about open banking, we've talked about AI, and another topic I want to shift to is this idea of automation. You know, we can all see that automation is moving from being a supplementary tool to an essential one. So what are some of the quick ways that SMBs can introduce automation to their payment operations to free up resources and ca- uh, catalyze business growth? I mean, like, work, like workflow automation is, is probably like the, 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 the biggest one here. So, uh, you know, putting certain controls in place to, you know, approve certain invoices, uh, you know, over certain amounts or under certain amounts, uh, to kind of, uh, uh, like embolden certain employees to, uh, you know, make decisions on their own without having to go and, you know, ask for approval from a manager to have employees feel confident that if they put something on their personal card, that they'll be reimbursed quickly. Things that can be basically automated, uh, which in most cases today are incredibly, incredibly uh, manual. Well, let's shift gears to our last group of questions. And these are our our closing questions. So I'll I'll throw my first one at you. If you could offer one piece of advice to aspiring entrepreneurs or small business owners, what would it be? I'll give an answer within like the context of, you know, Canadian fintech. It's, it's hard to build a, you know, a business within, within this industry for all the reasons that, you know, we've been talking about for the last hour. But despite that, I think it is the most exciting, you know, industry to build a business in. And there's so many, you know, opportunities and so many problems that, you know, have yet to be solved. So, you know, my words of encouragement would be to, uh, to definitely go do it. And obviously, you know, you're in the content space. Uh, so I think you'll, you'll be able to, to really nail this question. So is there a particular book, podcast, or resource that has influenced your approach to business in financial management? Yeah, obviously, I read a lot of the blogs. I read a ton of other newsletters like the one that I write. But I still kind of am partial to books. And before I was in, before I started newsletter, I was, I was product manager at a, um, a financial you know, infrastructure uh, company. And like on, on day one of that job, uh, my, my VP product gave me uh, Patrick uh, Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, which is, it's an amazing read, both because it, it shows you how to both build teams and build products and the types of problems that you're inevitably going to, uh, you know, encounter when doing both of those things. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it's not always presented in a technology lens and it's totally appropriate for, you know, whether you're starting a technology business or you're starting like a like a street side mom and pop 
ice cream store. Uh, so I, I would definitely recommend uh, Lancioni. Awesome. So where can people learn more about you and Canadian FinTech? So you can find me on LinkedIn. Again, my name is Tal Schwartz. And you can also subscribe to my newsletter, the Canadian FinTech newsletter. You can find it by going to canadianfintech.com. And uh, if you subscribe, you'll get an email from me every week. Awesome. Well, I'm sure you'll have many new subscribers after this episode goes live. Uh, thank you so much, Tal, for your time today. I learned a ton. I'm sure our listeners did as well. Uh, and yeah, I just really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks so much for having me. That's all for today's episode of Greater Than The Sum. I hope you all got some great takeaways from our guest. Remember, taking control of your finances is within reach, and it's not as complicated as it seems. If you liked this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. You can check out more about Pluto on Pluto.com for resources, tips, and advice on how to get control over your cash flow. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like to discuss, let us know on LinkedIn, Instagram, or X. See you next time.